Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick update on my experience with the Parrot Bebop drone. Priced at $499 US, this is the most expensive drone ever offered by Parrot, but also easily the best. And I say that at least in my initial experience with it. You can see I've got the shield from NVIDIA on the left. That is the original shield, which is now dubbed the Shield Portable, and that's because it is an incredible controller for this device. Uh, that is the Parrot uh, Bebop if you are not able to get your hands on the Sky Controller. And uh, the Sky Controller is a great accessory for the Bebop. Extends range, gives you the ability to mount your tablet of choice for HDMI output so you can actually see what the Shield also allows you to see, the output or the live feed from the camera, which is 1080p at 30p. Uh, but nonetheless, in my opinion, the Shield is the much better buy because even though you're not extending the range, uh, you are getting a complete package, and you can find this now for under 200 US dollars. Uh, GameStop is the place to check, folks. Uh, but all of that aside, I actually repurchased this for those of you that are curious just for the Bebop, because while the Sky Controller looks great at the end of the day, I'm not trying to fly this thing into, you know, airspace beyond the realm of at least what I think it's capable of. Granted, Parrot has proven that it can do that with the Sky Controller because of the extended range that it offers. Uh, the Shield isn't going to be able to touch that. It'll outperform any traditional tablet or phone that you would use this with. But quite frankly, I hated using uh, tablets, phones, so basically any Android or iOS device outside of this with the, the uh, Parrot. Uh, Bebop, and that applied to basically every Parrot drone in the past. If you look back at my 2012 CES footage of me first trying out uh, flying a drone from Parrot back then with an iPhone, it was just awful. Uh, the opposite of intuitive. This, on the other hand, when paired with the Shield Portable, is a dream to fly. Now, it's not perfect, but at its price point, it kind of, I would say, begins to blur the line between uh, what on the surface seems to be a toy and what could actually be used uh, for footage. Now granted the 1080p video on this is nowhere near what you could get from a DJI uh, Inspire, uh, the latest model, uh, which can put out 4K via a Sony sensor. It's got better stabilization, but the three axis stabilization here, I know I don't have a sample video for you yet, uh, but everything that I have shot has been incredible considering that it's all built in, no gimbal, uh, so Parrot's done a great job at making it really lightweight, and I want to say disposable. Now, I know that sounds crazy, and at $500, it may sound that way to many of you, but uh, what it comes down to with these drones, just about everyone I know that has purchased a DJI, at one point or another, that thing has crashed, come apart, it's just ended. And that's an unfortunate reality of the infancy of the technology, despite how far it's come, and that's one of the comforts of picking up uh, the Parrot is that you can get something that isn't going to break the bank and won't break your heart when it actually possibly, you know, takes or bites the dust. Now that fisheye lens up at the front, the fisheye, uh, actually facilitates uh, quite a bit. And I say that because it's not just uh, about giving you the wide angle, it's also how it basically crops and pans around and gives you even more flexibility in the shops uh, in the shot that you're taking so it does some on uh, sensor cropping uh, in order to move around that entire wide angle that you're getting the 14 megapixel stills I mean 14 megapixels doesn't mean anything to me the output of the still imaging is pretty bad but when it comes to video being stable and really looking like it's coming from something that's far more expensive than what we traditionally have seen from drones of this price point and caliber that's where Parrot sets a new standard. And because it's not incredibly large, it's lightweight, it is really a go-anywhere solution. Uh, I was very tempted by DJI offerings, even the older models, saying it, setting them up with one of the you know, many cameras I have that will produce far better uh, video than the built-in camera here. But at the end of the day, uh, it still just ends up being a compromise that isn't worth the negotiation compared to the Bebop, in my opinion. Uh, the battery you see mounted right here, which is held on by Velcro, not a good idea on Parrot's behalf, uh, but about 10 minutes of flight time, so you're going to need more of these if you actually want to get more than 20 plus minutes out of this. Also, another thing I want to point out in the small amount of use I've had so far, but still noticeable, the rubber feet that are at the bottom, I'm trying to bring them into focus 
Uh, camera cooperate, please. Thank you. Uh, these rubber feet, they are going to come off. So unless you do something to actually make them stick, aka glue or some sort of adhesive, these will be gone. Uh, even the demo models at CES were all missing their rubber feet. So keep that in mind. If you purchase this, do not be shocked. Also, in one of my first crashes of many so far, I've been doing far too much indoor flight, you can see the styrofoam uh, took some damage. But that's the whole point of having uh, the safety protectors on, uh, is that you're not going to damage whatever is around you, human or otherwise, uh, but rather just the styrofoam. And this is easy to replace, not a big deal. Um, Parrot does include... Uh, some extra propellers, but they don't afford you uh, an additional set of these. That's another purchase. But most flight outdoors, you know, you're going to be doing without these on anyway. It's more about the indoor flight. Uh, again, I wish they would have secured this better. I wish we got more flight time. But when you look at the whole package, the 8 gigs of internal storage, the GPS, which is a huge difference than the previous generation, uh, having flight plan capability, and then if you actually pick one of these up, which I think is just an absolute must have, I mean, you can use the current shield portable control, or excuse me, shield tablet controller, but that's in tandem with the shield tablet. So even though it will work just as well in terms of giving you, you know, flight stick control essentially, which to me is all the difference between wanting to use something like this and not, is having that tactile control, unlike what Parrot's been marketing for years now in terms of just using touch screens, which I think is terrible. Uh, th basically, the problem there is a little bit more latency, and that's because it does use a Bluetooth connection, that being the Shield controller for the Shield tablet, uh, and that's a handshake extra rather than using an integrated all-in-one device like this. So yes, it's a pain in the butt to go out and repurchase it like I did myself, but believe it or not, just for this, this is easily the least expensive, most powerful, uh, and feature-rich controller on the market. Certainly even nicer looking than the brand new Inspire uh, One's controller system, even though, of course, different caliber, different league of capability. This, to me, is cooler in every you know possibility, shape, form, uh, in terms of function. Of course, it doesn't have... I wish it had the... Uh, capability to really extend range like the sky controller that you're seeing right now but it doesn't and basically all you're going to be doing uh, is syncing this you know direct wi-fi connection like you would with your phone or tablet to the bebop and then the bebop's flying and i will eventually post samples don't worry they're telling you here keep safety in mind and that's critical uh, because this even though it's not a dji drone is dangerous I already had one crash where, you know, I tried to grab the drone, essentially, and it, it chewed up my thumb. Uh, none of you had the pleasure of seeing that because I let it heal, for the most part. But you see the breakdown of the internals of the system there, and in my mind, Parrot had never really done anything incredible. This product is not getting uh, the attention it should. Now, the Sky Controller is really large. In fact, ridiculously large. But... I mean, the range differential uh, differential between that and every other device you could use makes a really big difference. As far as using the Oculus for this, I mean, it's a cool marketing uh, spec, but otherwise, to me, totally impractical. Uh, in terms of the actual application, this is Free Flight 3. This is the latest version of Pirate's app. I still think it needs an incredible amount of work. I'm not a big fan of it, and this is where DJI... Uh, puts itself in another league it's that you're getting not only a drone that can do things that this could only dream of doing and this starts to again blur the line with older generations of the dji in my opinion and still at not necessarily less expense because i have seen models for you know under 400 uh, that are better drones in the most pure sense but when it comes to having a controller uh, there you're working with something that looks like out of the 80s much like the current dji controllers um, but they still will have a range and, you know, overall build quality that this just does not touch. But again, you've got to remember how much you're spending and to me, how lightweight this is. Uh, and also, if you can get a portable, like I've been showing all of you here, uh, it's a great combo. Now, eventually, if I can shoot a demo um, of, you know, me using this and the uh, Bebop in Flight, which should be 
uh, doable. It's just incredibly cold out, which is why I don't have too much footage to share. Uh, then you'll see exactly how tactile uh, and how great the feedback is on this controller. And of course, this was also compatible with previous generations when it launched originally. That was the uh, AR2. And it was great for that drone as well. It pushed what the Parrot could do because back then, no such thing as a Sky controller. So the thought of even extending range wasn't something Parrot was onto yet until this generation right here. Uh, but otherwise, nothing really else to mention in terms of build quality that comes to mind. I've talked about battery life. Also, I forgot to mention, batteries charge relatively quickly. So that's a good thing. You won't need to bring an extra charger uh, wherever you plan to bring it. And that's what I really like about this. Portability, uh, I don't see myself, I'm not a big enough enthusiast to want to bring around a giant suitcase. This is something that you can still fit in a bag, uh, of course, protected uh, and the Shield Portable isn't going to need that, require that much space either. So right now, this is a must-have, the uh, Portable. That's part of this update on the Bebop. And for those of you wondering whether or not it's worth the money, I say go out and grab it if you're interested. It's easily the best consumer drone ever made, even at its price point. Uh, that $500 price tag may ste uh, seem steep, uh, but the weakest link here is really just the range, which is still really good. Remember, consumer, we're not trying to, uh, you know, do indie filmmaking uh, and get overhead shots without having to, you know, lease a helicopter. Um, the weakest link, though, beyond range, though, is the app. And I, again, wish this app would get better. It's not bad, mind you, but the integration there, that is the weakest link. That's something that something like a, a DJI drone doesn't have to worry about. You're using a direct controller. Uh, but there are, you know, compromises from every manufacturer in every way. So the Bebop is definitely worth your money if you're interested in getting a drone first time or I don't know how many you've purchased already. Definitely worth the cash, in my opinion. Uh, if you've read mixed reviews, uh, I just got a firmware update literally this past week. So I have to test that out, see what effect it's had. Uh, but overall... Uh, the bit of bugs that I've seen seem more to do with user error and maybe not understanding it, as well as some hardware software stuff that has been hopefully straightened out or addressed, specifically the software. Obviously, hardware not in that last firmware update. But overall, in my opinion, great drone. And if you are in the market, this is the one to buy so that you're not going to, again, cry when that $3,000 Inspire hits the uh, garage door like the video that went viral, uh, you know, not too long ago. I think it was like last week. Uh, but that pretty much covers it today. For those of you that were wondering about my update, definitely worth the cash if you have a desire to pick one of these up. And nothing else like it. Nothing else to compare it to on Amazon from China. Uh, you basically have to spend in another league to get this sort of performance uh, and better video quality. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.